It's been more than five years ago now since I made my Lord of the Rings cloak. If you follow me here or on Instagram, you know that I post lots and lots of photos and videos of me and my cloak. I get so many questions about where I bought it and I didn't buy it, I made it. So I'm finally going to show you how I made my cloak. This tutorial is long overdue, but a wizard arrives precisely when she means to. The cloaks are given to each member of the Fellowship by Galadriel when they leave Lothlorien. The cloaks in the movie are made from a grey textured wool fabric, which was actually woven specifically for for the movies. The cloaks are actually grey, but they do appear green in most scenes due to the color grading. Cloaks made from the original fabric can be purchased for close to a thousand dollars, which is rather outside of my budget. So I set out to make four Lord of the Rings cloaks for me and my hobbit friends. Finding grey wool fabric with the correct vibes proved really difficult, so in the end we settled on a grey green fleece, and from a distance it looks pretty accurate. It cost about seventy-five dollars a cloak. Full credit goes to the Alley Cat Scratch web website for the instructions that got me started on my cloak. The website is really old and a lot of the links are dead, but it is a great resource for Lord of the Rings costume details. I did find the instructions to be pretty mind-boggling, so I have attempted to make them as clear as possible here, because you need people of intelligence on this sort of mission. Quest. Thing. I'm making myself another cloak, so I'm going to take you along on the process, show you how to come up with your pattern, and how to make it from start to finish. There's very little actual sewing in this project, so you could sew it by hand if you don't own a sewing machine, but if you know anybody with a sewing machine that you can bribe with some long bottom leaf, you'll get a cleaner end result. Okay, so we're going to start off with the patterning. The main body of the cloak is basically one giant half circle with a hole cut out of it for the head to go through. This drawing is clearly not to scale. What we're going to do is we're not going to make a paper pattern of the entire thing, we're just going to make a pattern of the neck hole so that we can cut it out from the rest of the fabric. When you buy a fabric it's going to come in a long strip like this and your cloak is going to be cut out in this orientation on your fabric piece. It's important to note that your cloak cannot be longer than the width of your fabric. So first off we're going to pattern this. This pattern is going to fit on just a regular piece of paper. If you have a compass that would be very useful. Um, we're just going to mark a center point. I'm going to be using centimeters but I know all the Americans in the comments are going to be mad so I will give you measurements in centimeters and inches because I'm nice. We want to cut a circle that has a radius of nine centimeters. Nine centimeters is about three and a half inches. So I'm just going to put the compass in the middle and I'm going to draw my circle. So the nine centimeter radius is going to give us an 18 centimeter wide circle. I'm just using scissors to cut this out and now we have our neck hole pattern. So next up we're going to make our hood pattern and we're going to need a couple of numbers. So we need to know our diameter and our diameter we know is 18 centimeters. I'll give you the American 7 inches. So we need to calculate our circumference diameter times pi. If anybody remembers high school, pi is 3.14. So we're just going to calculate that out. 18 centimeters times 3.14 equals 56.52 centimeters 22 and a half inches so then we need to take this number we're going to divide it by 2 28.26 centimeters and we need to add on our seam allowance two times i used a one centimeter seam allowance so this is going to equal 30.25 two five centimeters or 12 inches. So now we have one of the two numbers that we need to make our hood pattern. The other number that we're going to need to make our hood pattern is the length of the hood. So if you're looking at somebody from the back, the hood hangs down in a giant triangle. Here's our hood. Here's our little hobbit head. Oh wow, I really need to be an artist. So we want to know how long is this? My Lord of the Rings hood is 75 centimeters long, and I think it looks pretty accurate to the movies. And this is how the hood looks when it's worn up over the head. Just for comparison, in case you want to make adjustments, my Arondir hood is 40 centimeters long. But I'm going to stick with the 75 centimeters. These two numbers are what, what we're going to use to make our hood pattern. All right, so you're going to need kind of a large piece of paper here. Along the edge of my paper, I'm going to measure out the length of my hood. So I'm drawing marks that are 75 centimeters apart. At one end of that line, I'm going to draw another line at a right angle that is the length of our other number, so 30.25 centimeters long. So now you're just going to draw a line that connects those two end points, and you're going to fold the paper over along that long line. I'm going to trace it onto the other half. I'm just using the ruler just to, so it doesn't curl up on me. 
and you're just going to cut those two lines out. Now we're actually done making our paper pattern. The board is set and the pieces are moving. All right, so there's one last number that we're going to need to figure out before we can move on to our fabric, and that is the length of the cloak. Now the length of the cloak is from the back of your neck down to where the cloak falls. Where um, your t-shirt neckline hits on the back of your neck, measure from that point down to however long you want your cloak to be. On most of the characters in Lord of the Rings, the cloak goes to about mid-calf length. I am five foot four and my cloak length was 104 centimeters. But I absolutely recommend that you measure it for yourself. The cloak that I'm actually making right now is going to be a little bit longer, but I don't want to confuse you guys. So let's just talk about the Lord of the Rings cloak. If your length is different, just write that down and follow along. So the length measurement is actually from here to here. So what we need to do is we need to calculate this entire width because that's going to be what you're going to cut out. So we're going to take our 104 centimeters, which is this length, plus the neck hole, which is this width here, and we know already that that's 18 centimeters. And then we need to have this distance here. Five centimeters has worked great for the cloaks that I made. We're going to do this math equals 127 centimeters, 50 inches. So that is going to be from this point here to this point here. All right, so this is kind of weird, but it was hard for me to film myself cutting out the actual fabric because it was way too big to fit in frame and I was crouched on the floor like Gollum. So I'm going to give you my explanation in miniature. This isn't a very straight line, but we're going to pretend that this is the fabric that you bought at the store. It came off of a roll. So we're going to cut a giant half circle, something like this. We need to find our pivot point. So we're going to measure our 127 centimeters down to close to the end of the fabric. And then we're going to make a mark and this is going to be our pivot point. So exactly at my pivot point, I'm going to add my five centimeter cut so I don't lose track of where my pivot point is. Don't worry about what that cut is for quite yet. So from the very edge of the fabric at your pivot point, you're going to measure your calculated length of 127 centimeters or whatever length it is that you calculated yourself. If a member of the fellowship is available, you can get your friends to hold the end while you pivot around it. That makes this way easier. If you happen to be alone, just measure over and over like I did. This is way trickier to do at full size. This is probably the hardest part of the whole project, but you will face the same evil and you will defeat it. So now that you have marks all the way around half of your half circle, you're going to come in with some nice sharp scissors and cut between them in a long curve. So obviously we need the rest of the circle, but we're going to make it a little bit easier on ourselves and fold the fabric in half directly at the pivot point. Getting it all smoothed out is way more difficult on the full size fabric. I'm not going to lie, it probably took me a solid 10-15 minutes to get it smooth. Switching back to my full size fabric, you can actually see that I added some pins along the straight edge just to aid in me making sure that it was all lined up really nice. Now that we're all lined up, we're going to use that edge as a guide to cut the other half of our circle. Here's what that looks like on the full size cloak. So now you can see what we're dealing with here. We've cut our full half circle. We have our five centimeter line cut in at the pivot point. And the last thing we need to do is add our neck hole. I have my miniature and my full size cloak here. I have them folded in half right at the pivot point. I've also folded my neck hole pattern in half. So I'm just going to make sure that the neck hole pattern butts right up against the edge of that five centimeter slit. And then I'm going to trace the pattern onto the fabric and cut through both layers of fabric with my scissors. So here we have it. Our neck hole is all cut out and we're going to move on to cutting out the hood. So ideally you want to align the edge of the hood up with the edge of the fabric so that it hangs really nicely. I've just added some things to weigh down the pattern while I cut it out. You could also pin the pattern to the fabric, but this is all pretty loosey-goosey. It's not like we're making a fitted corset here. If it's off by a little bit, it's really no big deal. Ta-da! So we have our first one. We're going to do this uh, one more time. I should have just been this. Shortcuts make long delays. It's like the old gaffer that says that. I might be misattributing my quote. My precious. All right, my friends, yeet! We now have all of our pattern pieces cut out. So I have the two pieces of hood fabric. I'm going to lay the first piece down so that the nice side of the fabric is facing up. And then on top of that, I'm going to lay the other piece so that the nice side of the fabric is facing down. You want the nice sides back to back. You're going to pin all along the long sides. This fabric is pretty slippery, so I'm going to use a lot of pins. Once you have it all pinned, you're going to sew along those edges. Let's go to the sewing machine. So I'm just sewing with my one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at either end. 
Just stitch all the way along that seam, pulling your pins out as you go. I sewed right down to the point, turned around, and went back up the other side. Once you get to the end, backstitch again and cut off your threads, and your hood is all sewn. At the point of the hood, I trimmed off some excess fabric there to make it easier to turn inside out. Just be really careful that you don't cut through your threads. All right, now we're just going to turn the hood inside out and push out the point with something that is pointy but not too sharp. So you've got your seam on either side. You're going to grab this by the points and open it up. So now you've got your seam running down the middle and this is actually going to be your hood. If you want, you can top stitch that seam. You're not going to be able to get all the way to the point. So I do think that it's a little bit of an eyesore and I'm choosing not to do it on this cloak. However, I am going to pin that seam open just at the edge so that when I sew it to the cloak, it lies flat. I did that on both sides. All right, so we've laid down the cloak with the nice side of the fabric facing up. Now we've got our hood. You're going to find the middle point of the neck hole and you're going to lay the middle of the hood on top of that point and then you're going to pin it. All right, so there's a point on either side of the hood. You're going to take this point that's going to come all around here and you're going to match it up with this point and you're going to pin it. So then you're going to do the same thing on the opposite side and pin that. Now you're going to grab it by each corner and really tug it open. So this is a little bit tricky because you're attaching a straight line to a curved line, but you want to kind of tug on that until you can ease them together and pin it in stages. So I'm finding the middle point, lining it up really nice, adding a pin there, and then continuously doing that all around the neckline. You don't wanna to be too stingy with your pins because you want this to line up really nice when you get it over to the sewing machine. Just adding the last couple pins here. So now that the hood is completely pinned onto the cloak, we're gonna sew that seam. Just make sure to backstitch at either end so that it doesn't unravel. The part that's underneath is actually a curve, so it's gonna to tend to bunch up a little bit. I'm just reaching underneath the fabric every once in a while to make sure everything's lying flat and I'm not sewing through any folds. All right, so for clarity, I'm going back to the whiteboard. We've got our big half circle of our cloak, our five centimeter slit, our neck hole, which we have just finished stitching around the edge of. Now this point here is where you're gonna add the clasps. You don't want all of the weight hanging on your leaf brooch. So I added some hook and eye clasps there that are gonna hold the weight of the cloak. Because there's so much weight right on that point, you do need to reinforce it somehow. If you have interfacing, that would be perfect. You could also sew on some leather or some extra fabric just to make that point a little bit stronger. So at this point, you need to decide if you're going to hem the front edge of your cloak. I did hem the edge on my fleece cloak because I was worried about it stretching out, but the selvage of the fabric on the cloak I'm making right now looks pretty nice, so I'm not going to bother hemming it. You also could hem the bottom of the cloak. I didn't do that on my Lord of the Rings cloak because fleece doesn't fray. I do think hemming the bottom would affect the drape a lot, so you're better off letting it fray, which I personally think looks really cool, but you do you, boo. So I just ironed on some interfacing to reinforce the clasp point. So the seam that's just adjacent to the interfacing, I just ironed it open so that it lies nice and flat. And I'm ironing a tiny little edge on the forehead of the hood because I decided to do a rolled hem just to make this look a little cleaner. It burns precious. If you're going to hem the front edge of your cloak, do that now. So just fold it over, pin it, and sew all the way along the front. I'm not going to hem mine, so I'm just going to start here. I'm going to fold it over at our one centimeter seam allowance and start pinning. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now that the interfacing is there, this feels way more substantial and I feel a lot better about the weight of the cloak hanging off of it. So now we're going to continue pinning right across the straight edge of the front of the hood. I'd already ironed mine over so I could do a rolled hem. But because my fabric is so slippery, I ended up adding a little row of stitching just to make it easier. Now I'm pinning the rest of the forehead of the hood at that one centimeter seam allowance. It's a little bit tricky where the clasp area joins the front of the hood because you're going around a corner. Just kind of pull and stretch it and work it until you can get it lying reasonably flat. So now I'm just going to stitch right from the interfacing all the way across the forehead and down the other side to the other interfacing. Once again, make sure to backstitch at either end. The very last thing I have to do is to sew on my hook and eye clasps. I'm gonna sew those on by hand, so I'm not gonna film it. These are what the clasps look like. You've got a hook on one side and a loop on the other side. I have no technique for this. I just stitch through those tiny circles over and over again until it feels nice and secure. 2,000 years later, my hook and eyes are sewed on. I'm not gonna lie, it probably took me just as long to sew these on as it did to make 
the entire rest of the cloak, but this fool of a took accidentally sewed the first couple on facing the wrong direction. So yeah, don't do that. So guess what, guys? Our cloaks are done. May they help shield you from unfriendly eyes. I've been officially labeled a disturber of the peace. So follow for more nerdy projects, mountain adventures, and other fantasy shenanigans. As always, tag me in your projects or send me pictures on Instagram because I love seeing what you made and comment down below and tell me what nerdy project I should make next.